you haven't seen any VC, have you? They're sneaky. That's why you gotta go stealth. And today, we're taking a look at a great stealth blade that we're gonna have a ton of enjoyment taking a look at. And I'm talking about the Bark River Mac V Sog. This is um, Bark River's adaptation an homage to the studies and observation group from the Vietnam War and their Mac V buoy that they carried with them. Uh, and I've had about six months with this tool, carried it regularly, done all kinds of work with it. I've had a blast, but also just discuss what this tool has going on and what it offers, but also go and talk a little bit about history and just what made this design come into being back in the early 60s and through the Vietnam era and why it's still loved and a classic design today. And so guys, let's go ahead and jump to it, see what this tool has to offer after a beat on it, thrashed on it, and see if it's something that maybe you wanna save up for and throw in your outdoor adventure rotation. All right, man, super sick blade. I'll give you some specs real fast and then we'll just talk performance, um, how the blade portion itself uh, handled and do a little bit of history with you on the design itself. Now, from handle to tip, it's gonna be six and a quarter inches. Fantastic for this survival slash combat knife. Uh, and then the actual cutting edge is like five and a quarter just because of the very large Ricasso right here. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. We got these nice little waves, huge swedge, but it's very thick on this particular design. So you're getting a very, very thick, robust um, design there with a high convex grind. That is a convex grind, baby. So that is stupid hair popping sharp out of the box. Uh, could shave with that thing, even though it is a quarter inch thick back here at the spine and really kind of keeps that till about halfway and it tapers down some more to a really good piercing tip there, 90 degree. So you could throw some sparks if you had to. Uh, it's almost, it's slightly, slightly milled. So uh, I've had knives that are, have sharper spines on it, um, but that's something just to be aware of. And then that CPM3V, love CPM3V steel. It's fantastic steel. Glad they went with that. It's rather rust resistant. It's very tough and durable. This particular one has a Rockwell 58 to 60. Um, so you're going to get excellent edge retention out of it and excellent durability, particularly for this kind of size and style of knife. And so the, the edge stability is going to absolutely be there. So it's going to hold its edge for quite a while. But what I've always found with 3 be, uh, and this one is no exception, you are either going to you're going to have to know what you're doing, either use a ceramic rod or you're going to want a leather strop to mainly maintain this. You can put them on belt um, sharpeners and things like that if you want. Um, but uh, uh, because of the convex versus say like a flat grind or something like that, uh, but it will sharpen up easily, um, particularly if you hone it regularly and just stay on top of it. Um, it should, you know, hold the, the factory edge for a very, very, very long time, um, which is awesome. It totally did everything I wanted it to. Man, were the feather sticks amazing and just so easy to make woods working done with this uh, just because of the the convex man i love convex edges um they're a little bit more intimidating for certain people just because of what you have to do to maintain them but wow uh is there something to be said about that and that you get such a thick you can get a thicker blade at a quarter inch but still get crazy good performance and then obviously like you're stabbing you're piercing you know going through a paracord or a seat belt you know if you're carrying this as a duty knife or something like that easily like butter goes through that stuff not the best food prep knife in the world that's where i wouldn't really use it you can totally bust it out at a barbecue if you want to you know and, and you're doing the family barbecue and you whip this sucker out to do your stuff it'll do it um, but there are better you know just thinner full flat grind tools that are just going to do better for that type of stuff but everything else um, doing some light hacking it's not really designed to do that but you could delim some stuff you were making some uh, you know, spears for a booby trap, you know, but I wouldn't be trying to chop down, you know, wood for your fire with this. You can do some batonic, get some kindling going for a fire if needed. Granted, the way that you, uh, somebody would be carrying this originally in its original design, you would never be building a fire because then that would bring in attention and you wouldn't want that. Hey guys, before we go any further in this video, I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, Rocky Talkie. Yeah, my wife and I now have been able to use these on a daily basis through our lives as we have full time RV helping us back up the RV, being able to communicate around the campground and campsites, but also being able to test it out in much longer distances. We did some site to site that was super impressive. 
Ashley and the kiddos are way over there. And uh, let's go ahead and give these radios a shot. Ashley, are you over there and can you read me? Yes, I read you loud and clear. Awesome, I can hear you really well. Having the capability to do that up to 25 miles for that site to site and then between one and five in more mountainous rugged terrain, which is really what this was designed with in mind. Coming from my home state of Colorado, which is just awesome, designed for those backcountry skiers and rock climbers and hikers and you know those type of environments, but also you could use them around a work site, you know, a way to communicate on the job site, uh, as well as maybe your favorite, you know, motorized sport vehicle, your ATVs and side by side and being able to communicate that way. You want good, reliable, tough, long battery life in your walkie-talkie, and these guys absolutely produce that. The lithium-ion battery that these come with hold their charge forever. They have that really good two-watt power, which is the most powerful you can get without having a license, so you don't have to go through all those hoops, and we've had really good results. And so, folks, we have an exclusive promo code for you, the viewers, which is talk with GT 10 That's going to get you 10% off your purchase, and we'll have that hyperlink as well as that promo code in the description box below so you can click on that hop on over there see what they got going on apply that at checkout saves you guys some money and gets you some amazing rugged communication into your hands and it gives you the ability to talk and communicate when cell phone coverage is non-existent and cell phones aren't an option and so with that let's go ahead and get and back so that's to where it. we'll just kind of dive into history here for just a moment i love history uh and a couple years ago when i was originally doing some research just on this knife because i've had this in a few different versions particularly from the company Sog, uh, named after this, um, you know, special observation group, which were um, basically a predecessor to a lot of the special forces that we now know today, like Navy SEALs and those type of things. They would go behind enemy lines and they would observe, they would write down information, um, you know, maybe uh, stealth attacks, you know, things like that. And the deal was that they had to strip off all of their um, American insignia and even their tools and equipment couldn't be uh, American issue. And so when they started doing that, uh, instead of getting the K-Bar, you know, fighting knife that we all know, they came up with this design, had it manufactured, if I remember correctly, in Japan out of SK5 uh, high carbon steel, but with this style um, of blade. And so it was their take on a combat knife, um, but because it was manufactured in Asia and because it was not issued to the regular military, um, they were able to use it. And if they were ever caught or, you know, um, killed and uh, an enemy soldier found them, it would be much more difficult to identify them because they weren't carrying any standard American issue gear and equipment. And that's how this knife was birthed. So it's just a really cool um, kind of history there. And and I would stack this up, and in my opinion, in a lot of ways is way better than a K-Bar fighting knife um, for a lot of different tasks, not only woods work, but also hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, utility, utility, hand-to-hand, <laughs> -hand, uh, if you get what I'm saying. All right, guys, if you love leather sheaths, you're going to love this knife uh, because it comes with an excellent leather sheath. Full grain leather, super thick, very tough, reliable. Uh, you can get it coated or uncoated to help fight against um, water resistant or, you know, make it water resistant. You can get it more of like a blood ox, tan, uh, or black. I went with black to kind of match the handle. You do get a button snap um, pocket, and you can remove that if you didn't want that on there. So you could put a, a honing stone or a little field kit of some kind if you wanted to in there. Great stitching all the way around. You have three lashing points on the bottom for leg lashing or attaching to a pack. There's where those screws are to put that little pocket on there. So you could slim it down a little bit if you wanted to. Again, just very full grain, great quality leather. Good large loop overs right here. So very nice that you could easily run heavy duty belts through. And then you have a rotatable button snap with a toggle right there. And that slides the blade out. There you go. And it's fully ambidextrous. So you can put it in the other way. The toggle will rotate and uh, you can carry it on the left side if you wanted to. These holes are passed through, so you could obviously relash it if you wanted to make it more jump compatible. There's a little side to side slap, but it's quiet. Again, because it's all leather. So uh, very, very good quality leather sheath. Zero reason to upgrade it uh, unless you wanted Kydex. So super awesome design on the tool. 
And let's go ahead and look at this handle. Now this has a stick tang that goes all the way through. There's a butt cap on the back, um, screwed in there, lanyard hole, so you can use a lanyard if you want to. Um, that will help with some of the delimiting if that's something that you want to do and you want a little bit of that wrist flick or just have it more gripped in your hand. Then you have that flared back um, bolster and cap and that guard just works super, super well there. And this particular version is black micarta. You can get all kinds of different color combinations on that. Very nice full handle. You can see there plenty of real estate. That you could use that as a choil that is definitely large enough that you can choke up. The guard is rounded enough that it doesn't really cause any issue and you can totally do some finer choked up work if you need to uh, into that ricasso. It's not really a choil, I would argue. It's more of a ricasso there, but that feels just so warm to the touch. Nice grooving really good reverse grip i mean it is a combat knife so reverse grip it's got to work well and it just feels fantastic so uh you could carry it and you know use it in a reverse grip as well do more woodscraft type of cuts so even though it's definitely a combat you know knife the the design lends itself to also get a lot of woodwork done for this style that has the top and bottom guard and more of like the stick team with some mild grooving in it now, I don't really have any competitive options because I don't have anything in this you know, style in design. This guy I paid about 250 bucks for, um, and we'll have links for you guys below that you can go ahead and check out and see what's available. Um, you know, prices sometimes fluctuate, designs sometimes are available, sometimes not. Uh, but go check it out. I don't think you will be disappointed if this is the level of quality that you want because the quality and fit and finish is mind-bogglingly insane, but also uh, in just the style. You want um, a, a Mac V SOG knife that like is legit. That's what this is. Well guys, there you have it. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informational, but also entertaining to help you decide if Bark River's take on the Mac V SOG uh, is worth pursuing. Uh, for me personally, it's it, out of this design, I've had several from different manufacturers. This is the one that I have in my hand, the, most, the toughest and most durable in the design that I've ever used. Um, and I love carrying it. And man, does it have a lot of nostalgia attached to it, beauty, but also functionality. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. What do you think about not only the Bark River adaptation of it, but also just in general, you know, is it something that you connect with? Do you have maybe uh, an original, um, maybe you served, you know, or one was handed down to you um, from an uncle or, you know, a dad or a brother. Uh, I would just love to hear that. And uh, we just appreciate you guys so much for coming over today. Leave a comment below, give me your thoughts. I invite you to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Uh, check out other videos popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.